Hey, hey, hey. Thanks for checking in on, on Thursday. Uh, this is a monthly installment on the Homesteads and Homeschools podcast where uh, I update you on all the happenings around the Good View Quarter, as we've come to call it. You can find the show notes for today, which will mostly be pictures of the new additions at homesteadsandhomeschools.com slash gvq05. So, not a whole lot of updates in the homeschool world. Two older kids are doing quite well. Um, we're, we're trying to shy away some from the curriculum. We're finding ourselves getting bogged down. We're just trying to play, play catch up, play keep up, um, get through it because it's there. And really, I think we ought to be exploring more. Um, allowing allowing our children to kind of do more. Um, you know, I, I've said before, not sure that uh, unschooling is necessarily right for us, but um, it's something we're definitely leaning. I think we're leaning more towards um, giving them a little bit of freedom to kind of do their thing, uh, all within sort of a controlled climate, if you will. Um, not totally ready to just kind of let things go like you would find in a in a radical unschooling environment but um getting getting closer we're also finding that our our younger daughter um unschooling might be better for her uh whereas my older two kids kind of thrive um when they have goals and and expectations laid in front of them our younger daughter doesn't necessarily uh, have that um, drive that ambition and that uh she actually seems to learn more, seems to do more when, you know, it's, it's just helping. It's just helping, um, cooking, counting, counting goats or, or things like that when she's kind of doing it on her own. Um, when there are expectations put out in front of her, it doesn't, doesn't seem to click the same. It does, uh, with our, with our older two, but she's still young. Um, and we're still, still trying to figure everything out. There's a lot of baggage there with that, that we're, we're still sorting. And, um, if you have dealt with kids that, uh, that have experienced trauma, you know, that you can't just, you can't expect them to function like a, a child who hasn't experienced trauma, um, that, that sets them back and they are dealing with that first and then everything else follows. Um, and if they don't have the brain space for whatever else follows, you're you're not going to be able to to get done what you want to do. So we're we're putting those pieces together, we're putting those parts together and we're trying to make them all work. We have had progress with the youngest. He is three and a half, going on four. He naps, he still naps, uh, most most days. He takes his diaper off and then will go to the bathroom. So we've come to uh, duct tape his diaper on, just a strap of duct tape around the, the straps and uh, the Velcro on the diaper, and he can't get it off. So we've done that. Now, we ran out of duct tape, and I haven't had a chance to get more. And he always, 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 always poops in his diaper when he's taking a nap. Uh, he will poop on the potty, but uh, sometimes it's just for taking a nap, It's that's his routine. Well, the other day, he came out of his room, and he came walking over to me, no, no pants on. And told me that he had pooped in the potty. First time. First time ever that he uh, got up from his nap and went and used the facilities like a big boy. Now, I know that may not seem like progress, but um, it certainly, certainly feels like it. And when you're not sure where where a child is developmentally, when you're not 100% about past histories, those little progresses are amazing phenomenal, mind-blowing, euphoric, uh, just a beautiful, beautiful thing. So that's our, our little update there. Um, this month, I actually, I went to the Georgia Libertarian Convention up in Douglasville, and uh, I was originally slated to moderate a panel on homeschooling. 
as we got closer to the panel, uh, to the date, um, I reached out and asked a few questions and they needed someone else on the panel. So they asked me to be on the panel. So this past, uh, this past weekend, so a couple of weekends ago, um, I was on a three person panel to talk about alternatives to state run education. And unfortunately, I was not able to record it or get any sort of, uh, audio from it, but, uh, I was told that it went well. So that's, that's a plus. I, I tell you, I can sit here and talk to myself. I can talk to someone else on the other end of a computer, but, um, put me in front of 70 people and, uh, eh, I, I don't, I don't care for it too much. So it was a, it was a good break into it. I was up there with, uh, Dan Sanchez from fee. He also works with proxies. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, hoping, hoping I can get him on the, uh, the main show to talk about Praxis and, um, Talk about his his experience, radical unschooling. And uh, the other panelist was Dr. Lori Williams. And uh, she's she's up there in Atlanta as well. She works with with Fee, doing a lot of stuff. And it was it was really it was a good time. And I got to uh, to talk to some people. And uh, yeah, I really, really kind of enjoyed it. Hopefully can can do some more stuff like that. Uh, and uh, you know, if any any of you out there have questions about homeschooling and you wanna want to chat, feel free, hit me up, um, email, Twitter, come join the, the discord server. And, uh, you find all those links in the show notes and, uh, I'm happy to talk, happy to talk. So as I, I talk to you from my hotel room, drinking some, uh, Estrella Halasico, pick that up at the, uh, the quickie mart around the corner here. Um, yeah, not, not a bad, not a bad beer, I guess. I don't know, the Mexican beer and, uh, guess it tastes like Corona good enough, but, uh, some things happening around the the homestead. We harvested all of our our cauliflower. It was delicious. I, I love cauliflower. I absolutely love cauliflower. Um, it, it's just something about it. It, it makes me it makes me happy. It makes me happy. Uh, we got our our seed order in from uh, Rare Seeds, Baker Seeds. There and got some some things potted. Uh, we got some more cauliflower um, seeds potted. We got some Brussels sprouts potted, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get them in the ground in the next couple weeks here, three weeks here, maybe they'll be fine. They should be fine with the cold. As long as, as long as fruit doesn't develop, we seem to do okay in the cold. So olives around here, you can grow olives where I live. I'm right on the Northern boundary of it. So it's, it's been difficult. I've tried a few trees, a few different olive trees, and they have, for the most part, they've died. Um, and I, and I kind of gave it up, but this summer I was at Walmart and they had some, some bigger olive trees that, that were in pots and they'd put them in the, the discount aisle. They'd all give them up for, for dead. So I got uh, two $30 olive trees for, I don't know, I think it was eight ninety five a piece or something like that. Now you can't plant things in August down here. Um, I mean, you can, but you just have to stay on top of watering like, like a madman and it's kind of a burden. So I kept them through all summer on the, the porch and kept watering them in pots and they did good and they did well and finally got around to putting them in the ground this month. They were in the ground for a couple of weeks. It was up in the 60s, 70s. We got lots of rain. Um, they looked like they were doing well. And uh, beginning of last week, we got down into the, the upper 20s, 27, 26, 25, something like that. So I'm hoping they made that through. They're, they're bigger trees, so that should should go We'll see. And no, no expectations, but if we could get a couple olive trees growing, it would be, it'd be pretty cool. Um, we also, also have managed to purchase, purchase some more goats. We have some meat goats, but we decided to get some dairy goats. Why would you get dairy goats? The hope is to milk them eventually next uh, year or so. Love to get some, some milk and going and, uh, perhaps some, some cheese and some, some, uh, maybe some soap making stuff like that. We picked them up from a farm a couple hours away, bootleg farm, trying to get them on for an interview. Uh, I think they're down. Pretty sure they are. Just have to set it up, but they are, uh, a sizable goat dairy. They've been doing it for a number of years now, almost a decade. And, uh, yeah, so we got some, pretty cheap, uh, few day old goats that, um, come from some decent milking lines. We ended up picking up three Nubians, a uh, buck and two dollings and two Sanans, uh, a doe and a buck. And so 
who knows how we're going to breed them out. Um, if we'll try to keep lines separate or maybe do some hybridization in there. I think when you hybridize them, um, you know, that first generation, you might get some, some heavy, heavy milk production out of that. Um, like you see in, in plants and everything else. Um, you know, when you, when you have hybrids, they kind of have some of that hybrid vigor, I think they actually call it. And, um, so we'll see, we'll see, but, uh, it's exciting. It's exciting. It's a lot of work. You know, um, bottle babies are not easy and they may be cheap up front, but you go through a fair bit of milk when you are feeding them and it takes a fair bit of time. You got to go out there three, four times a day to feed them. Right now we have them in our garage. We uh, have a pen, some uh, woven wire that I stood up in the garage, laid down some hay, put some hay bales in there, got a couple heat lamps for the colder nights and, um, yeah, they've been they've been loving it. We let them out during the day, been introducing them to our our great Pyrenees, and um, they've been loving it. They've been loving it. We tried to go with uh, some some tree names. Um, we tried to go with a theme, and that theme was trees. Eh, kind of worked. Kind of worked. My son is big into Egyptian uh, history right now, so he did not want to go with trees, and so named his goat Bess B E S because. I don't know. Don't quote me, but he said it. It's the uh, the god of fertility or motherhood or some such. Anyway, Bess, that's her name. Uh, she's a, a little Nubian. The other Nubians are uh, Buckthorn is the male and uh, Sweetgum is the other female. And uh, the the two Sonnens are Holly and Birchton because they are white. So why not name them after white trees? It was fun. We we enjoy them. It's a lot of fun watching them run around. Um, they uh, they run around with our our three year old, four year old, and um, I think I think he's wild and crazy enough that they actually believe he's a goat. Uh, they treat him like a goat. He acts like a goat, and I think he's he's an honorary part of their their herd. So uh, see what happens when they get get older. Right now they're really cute, but uh, looking at some pictures of Nubian bucks. Um, they are disgusting, just nasty, nasty looking creatures. Um, something you would see in a nightmare. They have what's called a Roman nose. So it's not that elongated nose. It's this sort of shorter stubby nose. And as the males mature, it, uh, it just kind of blends. It blends in. They get this big neck and this short nose and this round face. And it just looks like a, a stub. I don't know, but they're cute right now. So that's all that matters, right? We did have to disbud them. Um, we did not disbud our meat goats, mostly because they came to us when they were older. Uh, having had the meat goats for just about a year now, uh, if I had the choice to disbud them, I probably would. I probably would. And that's that's twofold. You know, um, horns act as a coolant, a uh, cooling system for for goats. And down here, you need that. Um, it's hot. It is hot. We have some trees in their pasture, so they get some shade. But horns also come with some problems. And that's really, it's, it's two or three, two or three main problems. Uh, number one, they can hurt you. They may not realize it, but they can hurt you. Those horns that they have are, are big, they're long, they get big, and and they can hurt you. Um, and nobody wants to be hurt by a goat. I was holding one. I had to carry one when they were younger. They had horns on them. They were probably four inches long. And uh, it, it wild about. It flung its head back and it, it hit me in the cheekbone. Um, you know, an uh, uh, inch higher and I would have had a goat horn in my eye. So, you know, it, it can, they, they can hurt, especially with, with little kids running around. Um, one of those things to consider. The other reason they can hurt your your dogs when your dogs are in there or each other when they're playing, um, when they're headbutting each other and they're messing about, uh, they can they can gore each other, they can hurt each other, and you don't want to deal with that. And the the last big reason for for me anyway, um, yes, the horns act as a cooling system, but they also allow the goats to get stuck. They can let the goats get you know whether it's a, a tree they get stuck in a tree or they get stuck in the fence. Which, you know, most times of the year, that's not a big deal. But when it's 100 degrees outside, uh, a goat gets stuck in a fence. It's not going to last too long. It's not going to last too long. And uh, we're, we're constantly on the, in, the, in the process of pushing the goats back through the fence. 
last year we tried to uh, tape some PVC to their to their horns, PVC pipe going perpendicular to their horns. So it's it's longer than the the fence squares, uh, and they can't get their head through. But their horns were too short and it fell off. So this year we might have better luck because their horns are a bit longer. Uh, but again, it's it's one more step that you have to take, and if it falls off and you're not there, um, it can be a real a real sad process. Um, nobody wants to find a dead dead livestock on their their property and um, finding one that has either strangled itself in the fence or died of heat exhaustion in the fence is uh it's not a not a pleasant thing to uh to think about so we disbutted the dairy goats and uh you know it was a learning process uh, watched a lot of videos online um when we bought them uh i asked them to to show us how to disbud they disbudded um one while we were there and uh you know you read up on it, you watch it, you learn, and it is what it is. Uh, it's something that I think should probably be done. Um, and I really, I think as we go forward, uh, I would love to find a a line on some Nubians that uh, are pulled. Pulled goats are, are goats that naturally have no horns. And from my reading, that's a dominant trait. So if you can find one that uh, doesn't have horns and you can introduce that into your herd, you could probably in a couple of few generations um, work horns naturally out of your herd. Um, one of the issues that I read about when you do that, uh, supposedly this is, this is back in the 60s, I think um, there was a, a study that has later been, I would say disproven necessarily, but it's its uh, validity has come into question that uh, in when you have pulled animals, there is a, a higher rate of animals that um, are hermaphrodites. I, I can't say that uh, word as a hermaphroditism or something like that, but uh, the rates are higher. And um, over the years, that, that has come into question that um, those rates are actually equal to what you would assume they would be in a herd of goats that uh, is is horned. So, you know, I think it would be one less step to take. And uh, and why not? Why not? If if they come like that, why not find them like that and uh, and do that? So anyway, I will post a bunch of pictures of uh, of the baby goats in there. I will uh, post some pictures of the the beautiful cauliflower, and uh, I'll probably post some pictures of of Brian of Brian our silver laced Wyandotte. He still comes in the house at night, and when he's out free ranging with the other chickens, right at dusk, he's up there on the porch. The other chickens go in the coop to to roost, and Brian comes out to uh, to hang out. Comes to to hang out in the house. But uh, I think that's all for now. Now the next step with the goats is to figure out uh, another pasture to to put some fence up for another pasture so we can separate the bucks from the does and we don't have buck tasting milk in the future but we got some we got some time for that but uh, it is it is nice to put that stuff up in the cooler months um anyway guys i i appreciate you sticking it out and and hearing me uh yeah that's that's all for now i won't i won't bore you with any more details uh Get yourself some goats. Go plant some stuff. Get. I hope you all are, are planning your gardens and you're all eagerly waiting to go dig in the dirt and, and get that stuff in the ground. I, I love I love that springtime of year when it's, you know, spring is just around the corner. It's still winter, but you're planning. You got all that planning, all the plans and everything you can do is just, just there waiting, waiting for your taking. All right, guys, get out there. Sow those seeds of liberty. We can all reap sheaves of freedom together. Write us this dream.